What's up YouTube and welcome to the Anabolic Outpost and I am coming at you guys today with an anabolic pumpkin bread recipe and yes I know the fall season and pumpkin season is over it is literally the middle of January but I personally don't believe that pumpkin has a time of year and I will make my pumpkin recipes all year long no matter what you guys have to say about it. And if you've never had pumpkin bread before, the name is exactly how it sounds. It is just a pumpkin flavored sweet bread that people enjoy at breakfast or dessert time. And while many pumpkin bread recipes are filled with sugar and fat like most things with baking are, I went on my own mission to make an anabolic version of this pumpkin bread that you could eat at any time and still have it fit easily into your diet. So let me show you what you will need to make this recipe. The first thing is going to be protein powder and I am using PE Science Snickerdoodle flavored protein powder and I know it sounds kind of weird for a pumpkin recipe but the Snickerdoodle flavor complements the pumpkin extremely well but if you don't have this you could use either vanilla or cinnamon they would both work great as well. Next thing is going to be the canned pumpkin puree, oats which we will be converting into oat flour and then you got regular baking flour to complement that as well. Your zero calorie sweetener of choice, I am using sucralose, baking soda, vanilla extract, and the last ingredient is cinnamon. And before you get started with the mixing of this, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. In order to mix the dough for the bread, it's going to be all incorporated inside of a blender. And I'm going to start by throwing in the dry ingredients, starting out with the protein powder and I'm adding in 66 grams. I am now throwing in 30 grams of the oats, which are shortly going to be pulverized into the oat flour. I'm now going to add in some regular flour, adding in only 15 grams of that. And obviously, regular flour doesn't have the best reputation, but like I say with most foods, it's not the food itself that is bad, it is how much you are consuming, and only adding 15 grams of flour to this recipe is basically nothing, and it complements the oat flour really nicely, whereas you could put in completely just oat flour, but you don't want that incredibly dry texture to be inside of the pumpkin bread but if you add a little splash of normal flour that seems to solve it and make it as if you can't even taste that it's healthy in the first place. I'm now throwing in two grams of the sucralose and like any time I use an artificial sweetener such as my sucralose you could substitute it out if you like just do the conversion and you should be good. For guidelines sucralose is one to one with sugar and I'm adding in two grams. I'm now spooning up 3 grams of the baking soda, a very crucial ingredient in any bread recipe. And for the final dry ingredient, it's going to be 2 grams of cinnamon. And if you're using the cinnamon protein powder, you might not even need to add this. You could just leave it off of your recipe or just experiment and play around if you wanted extra cinnamony. I'm now going to go ahead and take the time to mix in the dry ingredients. And I wouldn't even need to do this if I didn't have the oats in there, but I need to have those be pulverized into the oat flour. And it also also just helps to make sure that the dry ingredients are mixed in together. It is now time for me to add in the wet ingredients and there is only two of them to add starting off with the most important ingredient in this entire recipe being the canned pumpkin puree. I'm adding in 225 grams of pumpkin which depending on the can you use you're probably not going to end up using the whole can. But if you were wondering, yes, you can refrigerate and or freeze this pumpkin puree if you would like to and break it out, just thaw it out whenever you need it for your next pumpkin recipe. Or if you're like me, you could freeze it and then add it into your smoothies. It makes a great smoothie addition if you make those as well. And then you could add the second and last dry ingredient being the five grams of vanilla extract. And I now have all of the ingredients so I could go ahead and get to mixing. And do keep in mind that this is dough for a bread, so it is going to be incredibly thick and you're probably going to have to get in there in the spatula to make sure all the ingredients are mixed in. But just go ahead and take the extra time to do this and make sure your dough is all consistent when you make the pumpkin bread. And if you even want to take it out of there and play around with it with your hands once you feel as though the mixing isn't working anymore, feel free to do that as well. My dough for pumpkin bread is now all mixed, so I just took out my bread pan and I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a good spray of cooking oil. And I am now beginning the tedious process that is getting all of this dough 
out of my blender because like I said before and as you are experiencing this if you're watching this video this stuff is super thick and sticky sticking all over the inside of my blender but it just takes a little work to get it out and go ahead and get in there with your hands if you feel that you need to. And it took me a good 5 minutes to get every last chunk out of that blender, but I believe I have done an excellent job, and I have kept the rubber spatula to spread it around there and make sure that there is an even layer at the top. And you may notice, especially if you are making this recipe yourself, that the bread isn't filling up the pan as much as it should be, and you are obviously correct with this thinking, but there are just two very simple fixes if you want to make it so that you have some even slices of bread when you slice into this. And that would be to either use a smaller pan or double the recipe so you have more bread volume in the bigger pan. And I now feel as though I have done a good enough job spreading it out evenly on the top. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it into my oven to bake now. Setting the timer for 15 minutes, although it could take up to 20. Usually I end up cooking this for about 18 to 19 on my oven. But just play around with it to make sure that you got the correct times. And of course, like anything you're baking, if you're unsure if it is cooked in the middle, stick a toothpick in. And if there is still batter on the toothpick, then you need to throw it in for some more minutes. But if the toothpick comes out smooth, then you are good to go and it is done baking. And here we go. This is the final product. And it did rise a little bit, but it does, doesn't rise as much as to the full extent of the pan. So if you want some standard size looking bread slices, like I said, use a smaller pan or double the recipe. But I am fine cutting this into strips and having some bad bread strips that are just as tasty. And don't be afraid to top this with some fat free whipped cream like I often do. And we are now approaching the near end of this video, so it is time to give you the macro breakdown for this recipe. For the entire loaf of pumpkin bread, as is, it's going to give you 47 grams of protein with 64 grams of carbs, 12 grams of fiber, and 6 grams of fat for a total of 500 calories. I definitely post a lot of different macro ranges on my channel. But this is going back to my anabolic roots as the macros are incredibly anabolic on this recipe with only 6 grams of fat for the entire thing and also getting an insane amount of protein for only 500 calories. And for myself, I'll usually break this thing up into two separate portions so it is even lower calories at that. But if you did eat this thing in an entire sitting, you could have no shame and still have it easily fit into your macros for the next day. If you did have any questions though or were confused at all throughout the process, process of me making this recipe comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible otherwise though if you found this recipe tutorial helpful and delicious be sure to leave a like and subscribe it means a lot to the growth of this channel and thank you for watching